Right, Kerner Text here with a video previewing the next version of Linux from Scratch 10.0. So a couple of days ago, um, the Linux from Scratch team published the first release candidate for the next version of Linux from, from Scratch version 10.0. And the reason why I'm doing this video as a preview is because there's been quite a substantial change to the Linux from scratch book and the way Linux from scratch is built um, for almost all of Linux, Linux from scratch's life which is just over 10, uh, 20 years now I think um, it's been built roughly using um, the same method which is effectively a few chapters on preparing the um, build system then chapter 5, as, as I often refer to it, has been the chapter where the temporary tools are built as a ordinary LFS user. And then chapter 6 is where the main LFS system is built as a, the root user in a treated environment. And then the subsequent chapters after that are just about configuring the system and tidying up and just finishing off the system that's all changed quite a lot now um, what the Linux from scratch team have done is as far as I can see they've used a full-blown uh, cross compiler system uh, to divorce the host system which is the Linux system you choose to boot from initially from the final Linux from scratch system so it's not a cross-compile sequence in the normal sense that you're building on, say, a fast machine to build on as a, for a target slow machine, or you're building on a particular architecture and you're targeting a different, complete different architecture. For example, you know, compiling on a Intel uh, processor and you're target, targeting an ARM processor, for example. So it's not like that in that sense. It's because the idea of Linux from scratch is you build it on the machine you want to finish up with having Linux from scratch on. But by using this cross-compiling method, um, that, that it's, a, it's a good way of um, divorcing, say, the host from the final LFS system. It also allows them to get rid of a bodge, which I've never really liked at all over the years. It's, um, I'll point it out, the bodge is not there in, in the new system. And it was necessary just to get things to work. So, it, as I say, it was a bit of a bodge because it wasn't a nice thing to do, but it was necessary to, to get things working. Um, even if you've built Linux from scratch many times before, I thoroughly recommend reading the book again, especially the first few chapters, just to get an idea of how the new system works and um, how the new LFS will be built. Um, and effectively, there's not a chapter 5 and 6 anymore, so there's not a single chapter for the temporary system, and there's not a single chapter for the final truted, or, or the final system which we build in a truted environment. It's kind of fuzzy, the, over, um, the boundaries between the two now, there's kind of an overlap. Um, the temporary part of it is kind of well you could argue it's three chapters you could argue it's two chapters it's it's all a little bit fuzzy now um maybe in time as um you know use it a bit more it become a little bit clearer as to where the boundaries are but at the moment it's um a little bit fuzzy because as you can just see chapter five is just about building a tool chain which will allow us to um build a cross compiler for for the target and then after that they've devoted chapter 6 to building some temporary tools which um, as far as I remember use that cross tool chain that's been built um, and then they enter the truth but this is not the point where the final system is being built these are just additional tools that are needed in the final system for, for building the final system so again, you can see this is kind of a bit of a fuzzy area. The, the temporary tools are being built in the truth, which was never done before. All the stuff that was built in the truth was for the final system previously. And then the final system, which was chapter six, 
is now chapter 8 so this is where we build the whole of the Linux from scratch system the final Linux from scratch system so at that point we're using compilers that have been compiled a couple of times for the Linux from scratch system um, and therefore they shouldn't be referring to the tools directory or any of the programs in the tools directory at that point um, if you don't want to read all this uh, prep stuff um, as I recommend you do the one section I do recommend you read is the tool chain, tool chain technical, technical notes because it goes into quite a bit of detail about the cross -compi compiler sequence how it works um, and it can get a little bit heavy so you have to read it carefully if you, if you understand how cross compiling works it'll probably be a little bit simpler um, it explains how cross compilation works normally when you're um, trying to build so from one architecture to another architecture so it involves basically three different compilers as you can see here um, using three stages and an optional fourth stage um, and what the LFS team have done is they've taken stage one and two here they're not using stage three but they go straight into stage four to build the system so they've explained that down here this is the stages that they use um, so stage one they're building a cross compiler which they've called CC1 so it's not C compiler, it's cross compiler there. On um, the host machine, which is called PC, and that's building um, a compiler which will target the new system, the LFS system. Then the second stage, they build another compiler called CCLFS. So it's not a cross compiler now, it's a compiler using the cross compiler and that's still in the old system so now they, this compiler CCLFS can build for the host LFS and target the LFS system and finally they rebuild it again and this time it, it's built in the LFS system which is basically chapter 8 the old chapter 6 and it this is where we can run the test this test itself within the system so as you can see it's fully compliant with the new system you could argue there's a stage zero here which is the hosts um, compiler and if that were to be written here it would say stage zero build PC host PC target PC and that is because that compiler is obviously native to the host system and it builds for the PC system it hosts the PC system and it targets the PC system so these intermediate stages these two intermediate stages one and two are what are needed to get to the final stage where we've got a brand new compiler that is native to the new system i.e. it can build um, and host as well as um, target instructions on that new system um, as I say if you read the um, this whole section um, it it's, gives a lot of information there which helps understand how it works if you need more information on how cross compiler works the wiki page on cross compiling is very useful as well um, I'm sure there's other pages explaining cross compiling it does mention that the type of cross compile is called a Canadian cross again that's mentioned on the wiki page um, Wikipedia page if you wish to understand a bit more about cross compiling um, also I've done a video uh, I think it was last year about cross compiling on a I think it was a 686 processor a fast modern Intel processor to target a 486 processor which is obviously a slow machine which is what it suggests here um, uh, that's got a slide in it which explains how that cross compiling is being done so if you check my um, videos in fact it's probably easier to check the playlists um, and you'll find um, a, a playlist there which refers to cross compiling CLFS cross compiling on Linux from scratch 
um, to, a, to a 486 and as I say that slide gives a little bit of information about how the cross compiler works in that situation it's not exactly the same as this um, because it's it's two different architectures two different processes if you like but it's quite similar because the architectures are quite similar they're, they're both Intel architectures and um, one can run on the other or the, although not the other way around so the the um, Intel 686 can run on the uh, can run 486 code but obviously the 486 can't run 686 code so as I say it's almost similar but not quite not quite the same so it should go some way to helping understand um, the bit that I mentioned before about um, in fact sorry I don't think I have mentioned it um, one of the other things they've got rid of is what I've always considered to be a bodge um, for some time now there's been a part in the bin utils um, pass two in the um, uh, uh, temporary construction, um, which is this bit here. So this is still chapter nine in the temporary tools. There's been a bit at the end of the past two of bin utils where we've created a new LD program and it's been recreated because the one that gets created when we build bin utils at this point because we're in a temporary um, system it creates the path with the um, tools uh, lib path and that's not what we want so what they do here is they recreate that program with the correct lib path and they copy it where it belongs but they rename it and call it LD new Um, and they copy that into the tools bin. And then what happens is later on in the Truth environment, after glibc has been built, so you can see the previous package of glibc, what they do, they rename that. They, they do some other renaming to rename the current LD to LD old, and then they rename the LD new, which is the one that was created here. It's the LD new. Um, which was in tools bin. See tools bin. They rename it, rename it to the LD. So that this LD program is the one that's actually used. Um, and like I say, I've always felt that's a bit of a bodge because you're creating something in the temporary which you're using in the final environment. And uh, yeah, I never liked that. It's, it's obviously worked well enough because it's been there for I don't know how many years. It's been there for a very long time. Um, but it's yeah, it's always felt uncomfortable about that. But now because they're doing a proper cross compilation, there's no need for that. So um, in the bin utils pass two, you'll see down the bottom there's none of this. Um, you know they did the make install. There's none of this making clean and rebuilding it or anything. And likewise, if we go to the chapter six, um, sorry, new chapter eight rather. And we look for glibc, which is there. You'll see there's no um, adjusting the um, tool chain after glibc. It's not there anywhere. There's no, nothing like that at all. So it shows how the cross compile is making things a lot more, um, a lot nicer, really. There's no there's no fix ups or bodges or anything to get things working. It's just everything works as you'd expect, sort of thing. You know, it's. It's um, all, all run smoothly. So that's really the, the kind of big changes. Um, as I say, from Chapter 5 and 6, so Chapter 5, the temporary, we're going to Chapter 5, 6, and arguably 7. And from Chapter 6 in the old version, we're going to oof, arguably 7, maybe not, but we're going into Chapter 8 where the whole system's built. So... Um, yeah, it's it's quite exciting, really, that it's uh, had such a big facelift, if you like. Um, in fact, it's more than a facelift. It's quite a substantial change. Um, and I have built it on a old Pentium Pro, and it works fine. I built um, a development version back in, I think, June or July. 
Um, and yeah, it went smoothly the first time I built it. It booted up. It's fine. Um, I haven't got it here to show you at the moment. It's no real point because it's probably a lot of the versions of the packages have been superseded already. But particularly, I expect um, the kernel because that gets updated quite often. Um, and possibly GCC. I can't remember now. I think that was 10.1 when I built it. I, I can't be sure, but um, I will be doing some videos on the new version when it's released in September. Um, I know people have asked me to do certain videos, for example, on Ubuntu long-term release. I probably won't be doing that this time because I just want to focus on this new version of Linux from scratch. Um, I think that's the important thing to do um, rather than how how to build Linux from scratch on a you know particular distro or you know just a general way of doing it. I think the focus has got to be on this new method of building Linux from scratch. Another thing I perhaps should mention before I finish is the fact that they've split it up into a few more chapters has made it a little bit less tedious. Um, if you can imagine, I've rebuilt this loads of times over the years and it does get a bit tedious sometimes doing it by hand. Um, so the fact that it's split up a little bit more, even though the second main section, uh, the chapter 8 section, is not really split up. Um, things are done in a little bit of a different order so it does make it a little bit more interesting um, the fact that there's more definitive stages to go through as you're building the system so yeah in a couple of weeks hopefully I'll have some new videos showing the new system being built um, I hope you found this video useful and if you like it please click the like button and um, subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more about my stuff that I do. Thanks very much. Goodbye.